Hi, everybody, and welcome to Book It Vince, the wrestling dream match podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Martin Bennett. And with me, as always, is the Punjabi playboy, Anthony oh. Hall. Oh, my God. <laughs> Punjabi playboy. <laughs> um, okay. I think I know who the Punjabi playboy is. Uh, is it the Great Kali? <laughs> it is the Great Kali. That was like... At the time where, like, what was the storyline? That was, like, I, I remember, like, he was getting involved with, like, Beth Phoenix and whatnot. Like, right, right. It, yeah. I think I watched, I think I watched, like, the 2008 or 2005 Royal Rumble recently, and he came in and he had Playboy on his pants, and I was watching it um, with a friend of mine who is, like, who I have basically like forced wrestling upon whenever we are working <laughs> together uh, and we have a break and he's like, why does his, why does his pants say playboy? And I was like, oh, I have so much explaining to do, but uh, don't worry about it. Just know yeah. that he's big and that he has like three moves tops. <laughs> oh boy. But he's being inducted into the hall of fame. So wow. Congratulations. Great Kali, uh, a star of the longest yard Adam Sandler version. That's um, true. <laughs> That's true. Well, um, also, apparently he has like the biggest wrestling school in India. So I believe that. So, I believe that 100%. I, it's a thing where I can understand like his star power would totally cater to that and like bring a lot of new people in. And But at the same time, it's like, I hope that he has other coaches because I don't know what him being like eight feet tall and 300 plus pounds could teach anyone that's like normal sized. <laughs> yeah. Like what are you teaching people who don't just have a giant hand for grabbing people's heads? Yeah. Like what, what are you? Te- can you run the ropes? I but, don't know that he can yeah, run I d- the ropes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but clearly he has a great mind for the business. Um, and yeah, he's definitely, a char- he's definitely a character that's super memorable and yes. you know, it, it will, it has made a mark on the industry. So I think Vince has been, yeah, I think Vince has, uh, throughout the years, always been searching for the next great Kali, like the next, um, basically non North American superstar that he can make into a monster. I think since the nineties, he's been constantly looking for the next Andre, the giant. (laughs) Well, yeah. And that was, that was a great Kali. That was a big (laughs) show. That was great. Kali. Now yeah. I would guess to say you would technically say almost, but yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> is he the only huge guy now? I guess so. Yeah, uh, I mean Braun of. Strowman is kind of big. But, oh, I but guess like, so. Yeah, Omos, Omos is like way bigger than Braun Strowman. Uh, okay, that's not what this episode is about, though, buddy. No, We're no, not talking we got... about the giants of the WWE. <laughs> no, but we do have uh, we do have a fun episode planned for you. If you enjoy what we do here at Book mm-hmm. Events, uh, please consider subscribing and following the podcast on whatever podcast apps you listen on, or come watch the video on our YouTube channel. Um, big, a, a little bit of announcement before we get into the episode. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to have merch soon. Yes, and I might be wearing one of them. T-shirt. I might be wearing one of them. So when this episode comes out, it won't be available. It'll be available next week, mm. and it is. This is our first design. Look. Of course, it oh, is the the hardcore, the extreme version. You know it. <laughs> you know ECW. it. ECW. But yeah, so we're gonna have these shirts on our brand new merch page for all of mm-hmm. our unknown error content um you can go there right now and uh, subscribe to our mailing list so you find out first when new stuff is coming uh and the website for our new shop is unknown shop.com simple easy we're gonna have other shirts yeah. on there other apparel other other fun stuff so yeah. go check it out and it would mean a lot yeah it would mean a lot if you want to support us if you like uh the silly stuff we do here at book events, or if you like our other, uh, unknown error, 
uh, content. It would mean so, so much. And we also just want to have something cool so that you could tell people about book events whenever they see your cool t-shirt. Hell there we, yeah. There we go. All right. Let's get into the meat of this. Anthony, it's oh, your yes. week. You kind of mm. teased me with what your <laughs> idea is, and I'm very interested to see where this is going to go. Yes. So just lay it on us. Yeah, I don't know how exactly. I don't know how exactly this will all play out. But what I wanted to do was uh, I was just so inspired by cinematic matches recently with um, aging wrestlers um, and also uh, new uh, exciting wrestlers. And I wanted to do a fantasy booking of Mankind versus Mick Foley slash Cactus Jack versus Dude Love. Boom. All of the characters of Mick Foley in a feud with each other. But I think mainly the main feud is Mick Foley slash Cactus Jack versus Mankind and how we can make that happen in a cinematic fashion, similar to Ethan Page's Karate Man versus Ethan Page. Yes. Yeah. The three faces of Foley. I mean, Mick Foley is one of the most famous wrestlers it just in terms of like the crazy stuff that he's done the characters he's had mm -hmm. the personality mm -hmm. all this sort of stuff he's had a long running career but we're in an age now where you could do some you can do some you can do some wacky stuff especially with uh yeah like i mean uh yeah, the spur of cinematic matches in the last couple of years is definitely a because of well, I mean, this past year because of the pandemic, and mm -hmm. you know, and and it's like, well, we're not going to have. I mean, what was it the Boneyard match with with Undertaker and AJ Styles? AJ, yep. You you're not. You'd want to do that in person, originally, but. Mm -hmm. But then at this, but then if you can't have an audience there, what's the point of having Undertaker in a ring with no one to cheer and no one to watch and all this stuff? So it's like, yeah, exactly. How is there a creative way that we can then, you know, uh, uh, tell this story and have yeah, this man. as his send off? And I think it was the perfect thing. And then, yeah, camera cuts, man. We're talking camera cuts and we're talking uh, movie making magic is how. We can resurrect the in-ring or uh, the wrestling abilities of uh, some of our old faves who have these iconic characters. Or my favorite moment from that whole thing was, was it they put AJ puts Taker in the grave and then he gets onto the tractor to dump all the dirt. And then the light yeah. turns on <laughs> behind him and then Undertaker pops up from behind him. It's like, yeah, you can do wacky stuff with it because it's it's it, you have all the creative control. But I mean. More than anything, I loved the Firefly Funhouse match with yeah, that was Bray Wyatt insane. versus Bray Wyatt versus yeah. John Cena, and it's like I wish I want them to do that for other people because I think it'd be the funniest thing in the world. Just because if you didn't, if you haven't seen the, it, yeah, to go through like the storied history of somebody's career and like be like, what if they turned heel here? Yeah, like NWO Cena was so funny to me. Like I was like, that's well, it's just absolutely insane just making fun of like it, it's also due to like Cena I think being totally okay with like ripping on his own career and like mm -hmm. and 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 making fun of the making fun of a lot of aspects of like what he went through and what he had to do and like what people wanted out of him so mm -hmm. and uh, most recently we had the street fight between Sting and yeah. And Dar with Sting and Darby Allen versus Team Taz, and yeah, which was that really was cool more too. of like, I would say it was more of just like, well, no, it was very cinematic, just the way that it was shot and like the cinematography and everything, but it was mm -hmm. still more of just like a match, you know. It was like a pre-recorded wrestling match with like some theatrics. Um, yeah. which is cool but like the way i picture a mcfoley one especially with all of his characters would be like 
um, with like would be like the final deletion, which is which I would love to shout out the final deletion um, in Impact with the the Hardys. Like that was that's the kind of one that really kicked off the cinematic matches that we right, yeah, are seeing true. now. Uh, and they tried mm-hmm. to do it in the WWE. It was less good, but um, shout out to Big Money Matt and the Hardy Compound. <laughs> And all and the crazy all stuff that they the filmed crazy, there. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah the final deletion. Just shooting I, I fireworks feel, at each other. I wasn't. I never really watched Impact too too much, but I remember that was like the first sort of incarnation of like the idea of like the cinematic match in in at least in recent history. In, yeah. Yeah. In today's and, modern wrestling. Oh, so yeah, the lake of I reincarnation, get, Marty. Like. Like how genius is that? Like how genius <laughs> is that? That you throw somebody into this lake and then they just come out and they're a different gimmick from their previous career or they're yeah, just it's... washed clean of whatever they are uh, being ailed of. It, 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 oh, wow. I know. It, it's Cinematic so, matches. <laughs> so such a great idea and so ridiculous and funny. I think mm. then with this. I mean, it's it it is the thing of like, I guess, like figuring out what the story could be that would lead up to it. But it's but I mean, like the thing is, the end product is Mick Foley having a match with himself. And I don't necessarily I didn't I didn't watch the Ethan Page Karate Man match. Um, oh. I know I should because apparently it's <laughs> but apparently also I mean, just just also to say apparently Ethan Page is not happy with the turnout of the match because that's true. That's true. Because since they he was apparent- leaving, they sort of re-edited mm-hmm. it, and and he wasn't really happy with it. And he apparently he re-uploaded like his edit to YouTube. Oh, I, I ha- think I have not seen that, but I should watch that because so, I did think it was really funny. And like I did see that he was not pleased with Impact after um the, how they cut that character and the match and stuff like that. Like so, I I think yeah, it's a good it's an also, example because that's also a tricky thing is the fact that it, like with a cinematic match if it's not put together properly it could just fall flat or could not tell the story Mm. that you're looking for because with a live match like you can't you can't do anything you can't you like you can't fix it change it and it just happens but with a cinematic match is like if it's not edited properly like a good scene or like and tells a good story then that's that can basically ruin it in some ways so yeah. Oh, also another great cinematic match in uh actually I think it's I guess this year um was the Cameron Grimes Dexter Loomis uh House of Horrors match. Uh that was very very funny. Cameron Grimes being seeing like Dexter Loomis's uh, sister quote unquote and being like, "Ooh, what's going shower. on here?" and opening up the shower curtain and just like a zombie just like chasing yeah. him and he's like, ah! "Ending ending <laughs> it with going back to the PC and or to yeah to the XD arena and freaking all the zombies coming out <laughs> and that's so stupid yeah, but so it just, funny it just enveloping him was yeah it was hilarious it was so pretty, I, I feel like funny. we could try something like that I think the way that we can end this match is like uh, a bunch of people dressed as Mick Foley with Sockos like just enveloping Mick Foley <laughs> But it, it, there's all these sockos just <laughs> yeah it, it'd be like you, imagine if it just ends as like just mick foley like as himself and then just like 30 50 people all dressed up in as like dude love mankind cactus jack all just sort of like congregating on the ring yeah. and just like swallowing him whole kind of thing. yeah yeah <laughs> Like I don't know what that leads to or anything like that, but just the idea and the image of that uh, makes me quite excited. Um, and I think, okay, so here, so okay. the easy thing, probably the easiest way to like center this whole thing on would be to, I think, root it into something that already exists, which. For me, it's like I kind of already said it, but like I would love to see more of the Firefly Funhouse matches, like where it's yeah. that John Cena style one. Sadly, now the Fiend and Bray Wyatt are in a weird place 
because they yeah. brought the fiend back and he's dead, but he's not. The cut fiend. The the it, the well the well baked fiend. <laughs> <laughs> the rotisserie fiend. <laughs> um but imagine if it was like I remember early on, um what I think actually Mick Foley was one of the first legends that the fiend faced. Or not faced, right. but like attacked. And then yeah, he gave him the was, mandible claw. Yeah, that was Mick Foley gave him the mandible claw. Mm-hmm. Um so I it could it could be that story just played out more leading to a Firefly Funhouse match of like where it's focused on Mick Foley. Or should it just not be associated with the fiend at all and just be this weird thing of of like Mick Foley's back in WWE for like okay. a short little time and then there and then like for some reason like Cactus Jack just pops up or Mankind and it's like yes oh, wait yes. I'm Cactus I'm Mankind and he's like <laughs> yeah. he's on the screen at the same time he's in the ring and like okay all this weird stuff Get this Marty I got I got this I I think I I got a way to start this so um the WWE is releasing the show on A and E called like Hidden Treasures or something Have you seen uh commercials for this you know what no. i'm talking about no okay so the, it's this a and e show that is partnered with the wwe where uh, all these hall of famers are talking about these like um iconic costume pieces or oh, okay. um sets and items that they use in these matches that have gone missing so they're like sending all these legends to go on the road to like find like undertaker's uh original uh like hat from like oh. a WrestleMania or, or something, they're sending cool. uh, like Stone Cold to find like this like vest. And one of the episodes is Mick Foley. He lost his original Mankind mask, oh. so he has to go on this Hidden Treasures tour thing. And I think they they try to like see where it is or how it's being displayed or try to get it back. And I think using a little bit of that real life setup of like Mick Foley, he's going to find this mask and then. Doing a little bit of like the real life stuff and, and tying in that episode. It's a little bit of cross promotion. I'm doing a lot of marketing work now in my brain for <laughs> WWE. Um, <laughs> so basically, let's say that the episode plays out, but he sees the the mask, right? And and there's like this instant connection with him and this mask. It's let's say it's like at some dude's house in like rural Kentucky. He's like, I got the mankind mask. And he's like, Oh, great. Let me sign this uh thing for you and then we uh, we're gonna shoot this episode and now i know where it is um but what if the energy of the mask is is magnetized to mcfoley once again this is this is very fantastical and uh, a little crazy (laughs) and supernatural even but right this is exactly what we need for a cinematic match is this uh this little bit of a Juge, this je ne sais quoi, this supernatural element, you know? Okay. So basically, it's like the mask is trying to find its way back to McFoley once he leaves uh, rural Kentucky or wherever the this first mask actually is. And and that is what begins this storyline. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, so yeah. it's so it's that McFoley finally finds the original mask. Of mankind. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then and it's maybe it's like maybe like there's the real episode of the show where it's like yes. at, like normal. But then like mm-hmm. maybe they show like a cut on like an episode of Raw or something where and then and then Yeah, because they're it, just promoting the show, right? But then you see yeah. a weird cut. Yeah, this like weird extra scene. Well maybe it's like Mick Foley comes out to the middle of the ring and 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 like maybe like uh Maybe you got um, Kayla there interviewing him, mm-hmm. and, or, and and she is like, "Well, yeah, you're, you're here to talk about your uh, your guest appearance on what was the show called again? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's called like Hidden Treasures on Hidden Treasures or whatever." And uh, McFoley is like, "Yes, you won't believe the show is all about finding old lost." relics of wrestling history yeah, it's called it's called wwe's most wanted treasures most wanted treasures. most wanted treasures yeah and so then and he's like and i had the fortunate 
time to look for my look for the original mankind mask um Mm -hmm. and we got a clip to show and he they show the clip and then like it shows him pick it up and look and go like wow and then like there's like like a weird cut in it and they're like what the is there something yeah happening like what what, What? that 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 wasn't that wasn't right and then um what could happen maybe it's just a bunch maybe it's like maybe maybe it's just like it'd be very it'd be very cheesy (laughs) maybe this is bad i don't know um like maybe the clip cuts out or something and they're like oh is um Maybe there's some technical difficulties going on. And then like you hear the car crash, like beginning sound of his music. You know how it's like the, mm, the car crash mm, and then it goes the yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, like, but it's yeah. just the car crash sound and the lights yeah. flicker. And then a, and then a, a, a light fixture falls into the ring. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Marty. Yeah, of and course. So May, and, of course and, and, and Kayla screams and like, and Mick like and jumps like, ah! back. And it's like, yeah. oh, geez, what's going on? And maybe it's just this thing of like, kind of like, I don't know, I, 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 it, like it's like bad luck, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or like it seems like that, where it's like you just start dropping little things of like, I don't know, it's it's uh, what came to my, what that came to my head where it's like. It would be so weird to introduce like, oh, yeah, here's a clip. It glitches out. And then all of a sudden, mankind's on the screen being like, oh, Mick. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. It's way no, too it's much not, right I, away. It's not like that. It's, it's not like that right away. It can't, it can't <laughs> way, be like that right away. Way too much. <laughs> but I like, I like the, the teasing of it, uh, of like the music happening and then something like crazy like happening. And then maybe you just hear like, just like faintly in the background, like the, the mankind voice just being like, uh what what the fuck does he say um it's it's like mommy or like something like that okay yeah yeah and it's just like a a fate like "Ah." and you're like holy shit (laughs) i was also thinking you could have a moment where maybe mix backstage and then like you do this like weird you do this like setup where um you'd have to like cut around it and, and, and like try to make it look as realistic as possible, but maybe like mix backstage with, uh, with a, like a wrestler talking to someone Mm. and then, uh, Mick goes to, Oh, this is how you can do it. Mick goes to like, he's leaving. He's going to his car or something. And then like someone stops to talk to him. Someone stops to talk to him. It's just like, Oh, Mick, before you go, uh, blah blah blah. and then mick goes to turn around his car is there and then like a um uh a forklift or something like comes although forklifts don't move that quickly but like something comes in and like hits the car oh yeah before he gets into it so then it's like if he didn't stop to talk to that person, that person didn't stop him. Would he have been in the car during like, like maybe it's like a transport hits it or something. Yeah. Uh, and, like, maybe. And just maybe just like backs like, into it or something but crazy. Then, yeah. But then they like go to the door of the transport or something and open it and no one's there. Or alternatively. <laughs> yes. Mr. A single sock. A single sock is there. It's not <laughs> Mr. Socko. It's not. We can't. It's, it's not Mr. Socko. It's just a okay. single tube sock. And you're it's like, just, oh, this is a normal sock. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh shit. What's happening? Okay. Here's another uh, dumb thing that we can <laughs> we can also <laughs> Mick Foley <laughs> almost gets hit by a transport truck. They open up the cab door and there's just a sock. <laughs> it's a it should be hanging off the steering wheel. It's like well, a sock a, hanging so, off the steering as wheel. As if it was driving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, what? Um, here's another so, dumb thing that we can so that we can do. <laughs> in so what? Feud. So hold on a second. So fucking Mick Foley's gimmicks are trying to kill him. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it, Marty. Mick, Foley, Mick Foley's alternate personalities are trying to like get him. Yes. Yes. That's so dumb. That's, that's the episode, man. I love we, it. We, we just figured it out. Okay. I love and also, it. I, I think like so since the mask is drawn to him and trying to eliminate him so that or it's not that they are trying to kill him. Maybe it's just trying okay. to like 
So they're trying to take over his body so that it can be like alive again, right? They're trying to get that human vessel, that conduit into the uh, the world of the living. Uh, oh my god, this is getting crazy. Uh, so this is weird. Okay. Okay, uh, here's another thing that I thought of. So if the mask is like so slowly makes its way into the WWE universe, I think different wrestlers should find it and it, they should like get possessed by it. <laughs> so you have like Otis and Otis is about oh, to like man. <laughs> go into a match, right? And he's like, Argh. I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's I'm like, Otis. Oh, I'm hungry. This? I'm hungry. <laughs> he, he like maybe he like opens up his like lunch box or something, and the mask is there, and he's like, "What the heck?" And he he puts it on, and it like does like a Jim Carrey esque uh, the mask thing where oh, he like, okay. like takes, okay it takes him over, and and this is like a fun comedy match, of course. So like he let's say he's like about to go face like somebody uh, in. A quick little match like it's baron corbin or something baron corbin mm-hmm. has been making fun of otis for uh, a couple of weeks let's say and otis and chad gable are like oh let's like we're gonna set up a match so that baron corbin can get beat by uh otis but otis finds this mask and then he's like now he he then he like puts on like the white dress shirt and like the tie and <laughs> we don't know if he has a sock yet we don't know if he has a sock right, yet, but he's okay. wearing all that on, he's wearing that white dress shirt and the tie and the mask on top of his like singlet basically so that he comes to the ring um and it's it's like the mankind music yeah so people are like what the f-? like what um and then he yeah he squashes baron corbin as as like the mankind character right okay but at the end of the at the end of the match um like baron corbin probably like has enough energy to like rip the mask off of otis and like throw it into the crowd so that it can be found by somebody else and then Um, and then then what like otis all of a sudden is just like what What, what's going on (laughs) yeah he's like he's like i'm hungry (laughs) so so and so and so so then you have fucking you have (laughs) you You got Samoa Joe and Byron Saxon on commentary going. <laughs> Barry Corbin just ripped off, ripped off that mankind mask and threw it in the crowd. And Otis is back to normal. <laughs> yeah, this is this is one hundred percent possessing that could Otis. <laughs> exactly, you 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 have figured it out one hundred percent. Okay. Okay, so that's like the the story of the mask traveling. So the the mask is always trying to find McFoley, but it it has stops along the way with other people. Like I think Otis would be a good one. I think somebody like a little bit unassuming, um, like that's a that's a female wrestler should. Uh, I was literally mask. just thinking, I'm like, who, what, what female wrestler could could find the mask and put it on? That'd be so funny. <laughs> I think it should be some yeah somebody like really unassuming. Um, that's probably like nice that gets it and like destroys somebody. Like oh, man. babyface, babyface Bailey would have been like the prime candidate that for this. So funny, but, but she's a but she's a heel uh, now, and yeah. she's she's not she doesn't have that <laughs> childlike sense of wonder where you would just put on a mask that you find backstage. I mean, I mean, <laughs> what about Nikki Cross? Perfect. Where Perfect. now she's kind of she's sort of like doesn't really well because right now she's not really doing anything and yeah. it'd be really funny that she and it does kind of bring out like old school Nikki but then at the same time it's like it would just be so weird that like you see Nikki Cross in her like normal like vest outfit and everything yeah, that she normally yeah. wears and then she just finds the mask and like you start to see like this like crazy smile like yeah come across her face and then yeah. she comes out as mankind she's got yeah, the mask exactly it's all crazy she's the wearing white dress white shirt. shirt yeah <laughs> yeah and and then she like is gonna wrestle somebody random right and i just absolutely crush them like she's probably in a she's probably doing like a one-on-one match with like okay billy k probably that would be really mm-hmm. funny because billy k is like in this match she's ready to get back into it 
She's handing out her resume. She thinks she's, you know, she's getting that push again. And then she just has to face mankind. Like, <laughs> how crazy would that be? That's so weird. <laughs> and of course, so like Nikki weird. Cross, Nikki Cross hits the mandible claw on, on Billy Kay, and she's just like, like just flailing all over the place. Um, and that would be really funny. And then, yeah, of course, it just, and then it finds its way to maybe another wrestler. Um, I think it's always drawn to somebody who is like kind hearted, but a little bit lost. Uh, mm-hmm. and, it, and it gives them like just like crazy powers uh, for like one match. <laughs> just one match only. Crazy power. <laughs> crazy powers. But we have to, we do have to consider the other um, gimmicks of Mick Foley trying to find yeah, him and or kill that. him. I don't know how dude love works into anything cactus jack like the thing is cactus jack was essentially just mick foley <laughs> exactly that's the only thing i mean it was like it was cactus jack was him taking off the mask finally and mm. like being kind of him but at the same time crazy and wild so and mm. dude love was just the biggest joke and i think he only ever wrestled as dude love like maybe like at most half a dozen times mm. like there's the royal rumble where he come where he came out as all three characters at some point right. like he came out as mankind lost then came out later as cactus jack lost they came out again as dude love <laughs> and then i'm sure there's been like there was like a couple of dude love segments or something but he he didn't wrestle as dude love for very long um because it was more of a a joe character but so so maybe we we tease the audience to to think that all of the other gimmicks are trying to kill him as well like maybe like something uh it i think something maybe fall on him or something something like that again or he like uh is trapped somewhere when he opens the door he sees like i don't know uh weird sunglasses or something like that and you're like oh what? you could have it where like maybe mick like maybe we do like another like moment where it's like something crazy happens to him and mm-hmm. he then like goes into the washroom and like goes to wash his face he's like oh, what's what's going on and does the classical yeah. wash his face looks up in the mirror and then there's dude love in the mirror and oh then, yeah and he's like, and, like, he's like and then he turns and looks back he turns and looks back and then it's just him. He's gone. Like yeah, those yeah. sort of th- moments. Yeah, I think maybe that's really funny that the uh, the mask is causing him so much stress now because of that like traumatic event of the light bit or fixture or whatever falling on him that he's like he's like kind of getting in his head and he looks in the mirror and yeah, he hallucinates that dude love is there because like dude love is his like coping mechanism for stress. And he's like, yeah. Whoa. he's doing like the butterfly dance. And he's like, <laughs> relax. Maybe, well, maybe like, like ah, it's that, ah. maybe it's that. And then like, I don't know, like it's so it's, these are always the weirdest to book because it's like, it's either just such a dumb thing or <laughs> it, it like is really cool and works but it's like maybe it's a thing of like he quickly sees it and then he's like oh maybe that was just a figment of my imagination and then maybe there's a point where like he he like is looking in the mirror <laughs> it's a thing where he, <laughs> where he looks in the mirror and he's just sort of like what's going on what's happening and then like his yeah. reflection morphs into dude love and then he has a conversation with himself <laughs> Yeah, I think that'd be it's funny. Just like, it's you just like, gotta relax, man. You gotta just, yeah. you gotta just accept what's going on with your life, and and just <laughs> and 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 uh, don't try to forget the past, brother. And it's just like that. He's having a conversation with himself. It's so weird. And he's like, and, and maybe that it upsets Mick, and maybe then like, I don't know, maybe like dude love transforms into Ch- Cactus Jack, and that's like his evil side. Well, I, th- I think yeah, maybe he's like, maybe and then he's he like, like stars trying, out. Yeah, yeah. I think like, he's What's going to on, Mick? And he's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I think Cactus Jack like tries to talk him down, but then he realizes like he might be in imminent danger because like mankind is like fully trying to kill him, or at least trying to take over his body. So he's like, oh no, like I can't just sit idly by uh, and be in danger. Like, what about my family? What about the people that love me? And like him thinking about that like makes him like 
shake his head a bit and then he looks in the mirror again and then we see Cactus Shack. And that's like the end of that segment is like, oh, he's going to be turning into Cactus Jack to be able to protect himself from mankind. Um, and dude, dude, love was just like a cute little like, hey, look I at think, me. I think at some point you definitely have to have like before that, like you can have the thing where you like it, like his reflection quickly flashes and it's dude love and then whatever. And then I think yeah, later yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to have a moment where it's like on the Titan Tron, like you hear mankind's like old music and like, yeah. and like then it's him. It is him and man and Foley's in the ring on the screen is Foley as mankind talking to him. Yeah. And it's kind of, that, and maybe he's like threatens him or something where it's just the, um, maybe not as so yeah, like threatens him in the sense of like, like warns him, like, you thought you could forget me. You thought you thought yeah. that you had locked us finally f- f- locked it, like finally locked us away. Yeah. We're coming. Yeah. Nick. We're coming home. Yeah. <laughs> you have just just open up yes. and accept us, Mick, or something like that. And yeah. And, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then that's where and then maybe that's where then the segment goes into like Mick running into the back and like into a bathroom and like and like Yes. And actually sits down. And then there's a conversation with Dude Love. Dude Love. Yeah. Or he's like, just, just, just let us in, brother. Like, oh, yeah, it's like, yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. it. And like, Dude Love's like the happy side of, of mix, like, you know, personalities or whatever. And then, mm-hmm. and then that's where Mick can be like, no, I can't let this happen again. There, I have to, I have to stop this in some way. Like, like, I put all that behind me and I can't, I can't yeah. go back. I finally like I have, a, like, I have a family. I'm, I'm old. Like I can't like if he, if his, if he gets a little bit real for a second, he's like, he thinks about all the times that when he was mankind and he's like, like that, like look what that did to my body. Like mm-hmm. I, I was thrown off hell in a cell. Man. Yeah. Like the, the, the physical toll that being mankind took on me affected me so much in my later life. I can't, possibly forgive myself forgive him for the damage he's caused but now he wants to come back i can't let that happen again i can't be hurt again my body cannot take the pain so yeah. i have to defend myself and then and he's kind of shack well yeah. and then and then the, and then you hear the and then you hear the voice of like it's still it, obviously it's mixed, mixed voice but then he's like you know what you need to do or something like that. It's like, you know what yeah. you need to do. And then it turns yeah. and then it's cactus Jack in, in, the, yeah. in there where he's, he's just like, and then it just ends off on bang, bang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, that's great. That's great. So I think, yeah, as the, weeks, the, as the weeks go, yeah, as the weeks go by, you, you start to see like more like weird, um hijinks with like the mankind stuff like there's like yeah socks around and i think like even even i think like very very subtle things <laughs> with like when, people being getting crazy from just like the presence of the mask and mr socko and stuff just like well when I, I like the mask thing i think with like yeah i think like cactus jack what you could have is the net the following week you could have mick like either someone like a heel kind of like pokes fun at Mick or like mm-hmm. like bring something up and then that sort of sets him off and then he kind of turns into Cactus Jack. Like Yeah, yeah. It yeah, could yeah. be as simple and as just like, like it's it's Mick Foley <laughs> dressed up as you know, it's Mick Foley as Mick Foley. And like says something and that yeah. kind of sets him off, and then all of a sudden he like starts beating the crap out of whoever. Um Baron Corbin. Or, uh, let's always just beat up Baron Corbin. <laughs> or it's it could be very weird <laughs> where it's like makes fun of him. Mick Foley other person makes fun of him come back to mcfoley and all of a sudden he's dressed up as cactus jack like that, yeah. that like that like the personality switch all of a sudden like changed his clothes <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's like that's like what they were doing with uh alexa bliss and when the lights went off and she yeah. was like uh like like 
slightly more insane Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Well, it just it just great. reminds me of this is this is a very nerdy reference, but it reminds me of in Dragon Ball. I think it was either oh god that now it's really nerdy me saying it's either Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. I forget mm. which one, but it's um what the hell is her name? It's the character where she sneezes and she changes personalities. She's the like the super uh. sweet like like I'm really nice, and as soon as she sneezes, she turns into the I want to kill everybody. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember yeah, her yeah. name, but <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So I think yeah, we, we get a couple of weeks building up where like Mick is just losing his composure, and then he just is always Cactus Jack. Uh, by the end of it, like he is just like interrupting matches, like getting just insane and paranoid that the mask is trying to kill him what if what if then there was a moment where like it's cactus jack and then like a face like like someone that's good like is like mick you gotta snap out of it like nothing like you're you're not like this normally like you haven't been like this for years or something and then like he like all of a sudden becomes dude love and he's just in the rain he's like don't worry, sweat it, brother. I'm I'm all good. Like there's nothing wrong here, bro. It's like I got (laughs) handled. Yeah, I exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah, what's I like going that. on, but yeah, I think um, it, I think it'd be a fun segment with like the the new day being like Mick, Mick, Mick. Like, what's going on? You're like, yeah, you're, uh, th- you, like this is insane. Like the mask. There's no way this mask is trying to kill you. And and then he's you love, and he's like, whoa, yeah, don't worry, guys. We're all good here. I'm what, handling it. So, something that would be interesting. And it, and you can make it really weird. Maybe this is the turning point to then mm. head into whatever match this ends up being, right? Maybe yes. this snaps Mick out of like the switching personalities and it's him, but then like it's like Mick like says at the end of this, like he has to confront himself. And then yes. the match is set for like WrestleMania where it's like a <laughs> my God, that background. Yes. Yes. Yeah, man. Oh, you need to watch. If you're listening to the audio, please just come over and watch the video version quickly because uh, Anthony's background is the three faces of Foley and it's lovely and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> uh, but, yes. But what I'm so what he, saying he is has like, to, yeah, confront himself. And, and, and so then the match is set at WrestleMania, but this is the moment that leads into that. If you remember mm. forever ago when the rock and mankind teamed up and they were the rock and sock connection, mm-hmm. they did a segment where Mick Foley as mankind uh, did. This is your life rock. It's a, yep. it's, it's one of the biggest segments it's in like mm-hmm. their kind of career it is. It was such a turning point because it was like there were enemies at one point, then they were friends and they worked together and all this stuff. But that was like, cause this is your life was like a thing. I think it was a TV show in the nineties where it was like bringing up someone's past and like bringing in people that they had forgotten or like stuff that, no one else would have known. And so they did it for The Rock. And, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, young Rock. Young no, Rock. Now now playing on uh, <laughs> d- 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 network television. This is no, your it's, life. No, it's because I said they did it for The Rock. You get oh. it? Get Rakesh, yeah. See, that's where Gosh. my mind goes. That's how weird today oh. is. Where I think of a dumb <laughs> fucking meme for from twenty years ago. I did it for the rock. Um, no, okay. So, like, it, it basically was Mick Foley bringing in things and moments and people up from the Rock's past, and one of them was like he brought in a clown, and then I think it was that he brought in his like second grade teacher or something like that Mm -hmm. but so what if they did this is your life Mick Foley and then it was like and then it was like it's like this weird like intervention where like all the personalities are just showing up or oh oh what if they did the that 70s style show um camera thing like when they're all sitting down smoking weed 
Yeah. And they're in the circle and the camera's like like yeah. like doing that. What if it's the four like oh. four things of Mick Foley and it's like this is your Huge. life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all of them like talking to each other. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then like at the end of it, like they just can't come to an agreement because mankind wants to be the main personality, like the person who is controlling Mick's body again, so that he can wrestle. Uh, and then he just like you see like a hand like come up to to Mick's like throat, like and it's the it's the it's Mister Sacco, and he's like choking him out. And he's like, ah, oh, ah, oh. and he like <laughs> runs out. Um, and he like maybe runs into the ring and then, and that's when, uh, mankind comes back on camera and it's like, ah, we're going to end this once and for all. Um, I'm, I'm going to put you away for all the hurt you've done to me. Actually. So, okay. So what if instead, sorry, I just thought about this. Um, <clears throat> the whole, like that 70 show, like circle, like thing, I think that would be mm. way cooler in the actual match. It, for the for oh. the segment that for the segment that like brings this all together, I think it would be this is your life, and it's Mick in the middle of the ring, but it's hosted by mankind, and so then mankind is bringing up all this stuff from Mick Foley's past. So mankind is on the Titantron and just like talking about it while Mick is in the ring, and there's like a set built out and everything, and then people, these people from Mick's life are like coming down the Titantron like one at a time. Yeah, yeah, and, okay. and it's this thing where like Mick like comes out to finally like address like I don't know what's going on I need to figure it out and then that's where mankind comes up and then it's like mankind does the whole like just like he did with the rock he does the uh, Mick Foley this is your life and then like they yeah. do the whole segment and and it's it's a huge callback to that moment from Mick's yeah, career yeah. but then also mm -hmm. like it then like we can it gets repurposed for this and like you bring down these people and then maybe in that moment, like depending on who comes down, like Mick all of a sudden turns into like one of the characters. Yeah. So I don't like maybe it's like a specific uh, yeah, person I, I like that, that he can. Yeah, he can switch because like um, he's trying to comfort whomever is coming down the Titan Tron. So he like switches to the appropriate person to encounter this <clears> this <throat> guest, like his like his family, like his son and his daughter Noel and his wife like they all like come down because they're so worried for him and he changes into dude love and he's like yeah don't worry about me peace and love uh, and just like <laughs> he's trying to comfort them but then like if somebody else comes down like if let's say like the undertaker comes down then he's like oh he, he changes to Cactus Jack and he's like he's I think if the undertaker like, oh. came down he'd, he'd be mankind I think then like Triple H Coming down, that would be Cactus Jack because that was oh, their yeah, whole yeah, rap yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. Yeah, um, so it would be Triple H because then, because like mankind's always on the screen, right? He's never coming down. Yeah, I guess so. But I think then that ends with like Mick, like maybe having like a breakdown or something, and then like he come, he, he, it's like finally he is himself, mm -hmm. and then that's where he like looks up at like mankind on the screen and and. Maybe like Mick finally says something and like it blacks out, comes back on, mankind's gone. And then Mick's mm. like, I got to do some, I have to do something to finish this, to put all these demons away. Yeah. Um, And it's going to happen at WrestleMania. And then like, yeah, they and he's announce like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what you would even call. I, I guess it would be like the faces of Mick Foley finally confront each other. Something weird like that. Yeah. 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 And, and like, I think to end that, that final promo, Mick is like, I'll see you in the boiler room. It's boiler like, it's like I know where to find. It's like, it's like, I know where to find you. I'll see you in the boiler room. And it's like this, like the faces of Mick Foley boiler room match. And um, yeah, and the, the cinematic stuff is like, yeah, him, we're we're gonna get to this match, right? So <clears> now we're at Russell we're at WrestleMania. This is the this is the boiler room cinematic match with the faces of Mick Foley. And obviously it's <laughs> gotta be that Mick I think the way that you start it off is like Mick enters and he's like, you know, sulking around looking. And then I think he finds like maybe it's like one of those uh it's like a table or something and he goes and sits at it and then that's where 
it's that that 70s show like mm. like spinning camera sort of segment where like it turns to the next person and, like he basically has a conversation with himself in all of his different it's forms like, um what's that wwe network show uh where they all had dinner together it's like table for table three or whatever table for three <laughs> it's it's like that but it's the that 70s show angle uh because they're all sitting at the table together and that's at like, the beginning of the match is and there like, also at like, his table? He essentially has a conversation with himself, but it's like all of his different personalities and like they're talking. Yeah. And then that boils over to the point of then like <laughs> imagine this. That boils over to the point where like, yeah, like a, a, a hand comes out and it's Mr. Sako and he's trying to like yeah. he's trying to mandible claw him. And then Mick like grabs his arm, pulls it off, and then it comes back to like wide cam, and Mick is fighting like a body double of himself. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And like every single uh, and, and and every and to make it even more wacky and weird and confusing. What if like is it always mankind and like Mick turns into different people or do they both turn into different people? <laughs> I think it's always I think it's always mankind but Mick can switch. From between being himself, Mick, Cactus, Cactus Jack, and Dude Love. And Dude Love. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because, like, Cause, yeah. Because if they were both switching and all of a sudden you have Dude Love versus Cactus Jack at one point, it'd be the most confusing. Like, who are we cheering for? I mean, we're cheering for Mick, but I don't know yeah. who, which one. <laughs> like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, at the, like at the same time yeah it'd be great to know like mankind is the villain in this and mick foley and his personalities like yeah, all, yeah. like they're coming out of him to fight mankind but it'd be really funny just like all the different versions of it and all of a sudden it's like all of a sudden there's three people <laughs> i think that's definitely something all, that and should then all be of a sudden the there's four of them and it's mick and the and, and three versions and, then, and three different versions yeah. of himself and it's that like i should absolutely be there it would just well, be so can it would be so confusing, but it'd be so entertaining because, mm-hmm. <laughs> because then you're like, I don't know who I'm cheering for. I don't know who I'm exactly. <laughs> I think that's I think that's really funny. Like as they get into the boiler room and they're like they're hitting each other and stuff. And the more damage Mick gets, like the the less control he has over the personalities. So, yeah, then they just like start coming out everybody. And then you see like Cactus Jack versus like do love and then they just they're just like no i'm not here for you they like hug and then you like quick pan to like mankind is like about to um do a mandible claw and then yeah it could be this thing of like it like it could be this thing of like you could easily work it in where like maybe one of them grabs like a two by four or some sort of weapon and hits the other one and then in -hmm. that hit that suddenly changes who they are so like maybe mick like hits mankind and Mm -hmm. like he you know he whips back and then turns around and he's suddenly cactus jack and it's like oh shit i'm I'm, wait what like it's just it's just it would be so wild and weird and i could just see the wrestling community watching this madness Mm -hmm. unfold where it's like i don't know what i'm watching i don't know what's going on but i love every second of it (laughs) Mm-hmm. And then that mm-hmm. way you could have you can have moments where like you see Mick take a bump or two, but then you can have these mm-hmm. body doubles um clearly you know like clearly uh, uh like doing spots to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then like we like we talked about in the end, I think Mick gets forced out of the boiler room and he like runs into the ring but then all the body doubles that we use and other people are dressed up as the dude loves the cactus shacks the mankind and they all just envelop him and i think i think i think and what happens yeah i think i think the best thing is like i think then like maybe what happens is like maybe like the conversation like spills out of the boiler room and then it makes Mm -hmm. its way to the ring and mm-hmm. you see Mick fighting with one other person. And then all of a sudden it's two, then it's three. Right. And it's just like, dude, mm-hmm. love cactus, Jack, mankind. And like, there's multiples. And then like it does. And then all of a sudden his music playing is that car crash. And then like, and then all of a sudden you just see like 
all these people just coming out of the woodworks, just like dressed up as them, just like coming out and just like coming into the ring, just trying to like scratch and claw at Mick. And like it then becomes this like aerial shot where it's he's like, no, like that's yeah, of thing. exactly. And then just gets like consumed and then like goes black. Yeah. Comes back on and it's Mick sitting in the ring holding the mask. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's it. That's and it. then and that's then so that's so great. <laughs> and then he stands up, or it's him standing in the ring with the mask, just holding it in his hands, and he just sets it in the ring and walks out. And it's like Ooh. the Undertaker where the Undertaker left his gloves and his hat and stuff in the ring. Yeah. And it's like the yes. retirement thing where like he leaves his mask in the ring and he leaves. And it's like, and that's it. Perfect. And that's then you perfect, and then man. you have and then you have Michael Cole and Corey Graves go and say the classic line, what did we just witness? <laughs> what did we just witness? You you oh. have no idea, guys. We have no idea, but it was fantastic and weird and wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Oof. what a ridiculous that was just madness <laughs> yeah I'd love to see that same man and I want to see I want to see Mick have like a an, another like fun send off did did that meet your expectations Anthony yeah of course <laughs> I think like it was it, uh, I was, I was like, uh, not entirely sure how we would end up uh, putting it together, and how it ended up playing out was uh, was fantastic, beautiful. So just to recap, really quickly, Mick goes on the show, finds his old mask, and then he starts getting haunted, <laughs> and accidents start happening around him. The mask suddenly shows up mm. on WWE. It starts attaching itself to different wrestlers and taking them over. Then all of yeah. a sudden, Mick starts magically transforming into his old gimmicks until finally uh yeah mankind confronts mick <laughs> and they have a boiler room match <laughs> where he just keeps transforming into different versions of himself until he's fully consumed by many versions of himself to then leave his mask in the middle of the ring and say goodbye to his old gimmicks yes and that wow. is it the full Full shebang circle <laughs> of life. <laughs> I really want Mick Foley to listen to this episode now and just listen to this crazy shit that we just came up with. <laughs> it was fucking crazy, uh, and I think I think Mick would appreciate uh, aspects of it. He is a comedian. Uh, he uh, has done stand up comedy and uh, has many many books. I think he's. I think he would appreciate this. We'd love to see this if it was ever possible. That'd be so crazy. Well, there you go. There's. Mm. The the many faces of Mick Foley match, I guess you yes, could say. Yeah. Um, let us know how you would, I don't know, want to see Mick retire, want to see a return of uh his many gimmicks in some form to to TV. Um yeah, let us know. Um <clears throat> mm -hmm. excuse me. Um we now move on to our question of the week and our match recommendation. Uh, yes. If you want to submit your own question that we answer here on the podcast, you can do so either by just submitting it to us anytime on our social media, or you can go to our website, unknown slash book events and submit one there. Mm -hmm. This one this week is, it's really simple. It kind of came, it kind of came up because of the, uh, this last week's, Dynamite main event, which was the arcade anarchy match. It was very good. Highly mm. recommend going and watching it. Um, it was really fun. But <clears throat> um, it, 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 the question came up. Uh, so I'd love to get, I'd love to know what you, what you would pick, Anthony. If you could have a wrestling match happen at any weird location, like place or like area or whatever, where would you pick? If me personally, or if I'm booking a match that's if at you're booking a, a weird a match, location. 
and you want it to happen at like a strange location, like, mm. like the first thing that came to my head is I'd love to see, because we've seen classic matches, you know, we've, we've mm-hmm. seen, we've seen the rooftop match, mm-hmm. you know, the arcade anarchy, which was technically it just, they just put a bunch of arcade stuff around the ring, but imagine if it happened at a Chuck E. Cheese, that would have been cool. Um, yeah. What came to my head was, uh, and we've seen it, at, we've seen matches at graveyard, like all the sorts of, uh, I'd love to see a match at an aquarium. Oh, because imagine just like someone being pushed off and into like a giant tank or something. A tank. Yeah. I just imagine it just makes me imagine of like moments where like somewhat you see like two wrestlers like fighting underwater as like stuff like swims around them. Oh, you know? that's and, like cool. you're watching from like the glass and like a kid walks by a kid. A kid walks by and just like looks up at the glass. and There's these two wrestlers like fighting each other in the water. Like okay. it just made me think, think of that. I, I think I have two. Um, one maybe uh, is a little bit more old school, and I think is doable. Is like a diner, like an old school diner. Like having a oh, hardcore okay. match in a diner would be really awesome. Uh, you, like you know, s- like sliding somebody on the counter and hitting them with like every single glass that's on the counter, throwing them into a jukebox, dumping milkshakes all over each other, going to the back in the kitchen, hitting each other with frying pans. Oh, huge, huge uh, <laughs> potential there for a that'd diner be, match. Yeah, that'd be um, really good. Another one that would be funny would be a gas station. Um, and of course, the finish uh, for that match would be uh, somebody getting lit on fire. Oh, man, <laughs> that'd be crazy. Um, <laughs> like it, they would be like, it would, they would like put a bunch of propane tanks in like a uh, the back of a, a truck bed and like dump gasoline all over them. And then they're just like, it's obviously simulated because we're not blowing anybody up or any gas station up, but yeah, that would be, <laughs> that would be absolutely insane. So yeah, my pick would be like, yeah, like an old school diner uh, or a, a gas station. You could have, you could have a good bit where like it's, it starts inside of like the, the store like area, like yeah. where the cashier and stuff is and like throwing yeah. each other into like the shelves, sort of like a, so harkening back, harkening back to this Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Booker T grocery store match. Exactly, exactly that. Yeah, <laughs> um, just dumping Red Bulls on each other, like. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then it like breaks out outside, and then like someone like grabs like the window, like the window wiper thing, and yeah, like, use yeah. it, like the either, squeegee, like, hit, the squeegee, yeah. like hits him with that or whatever, or, like dumps their head into like the, the, into the yeah the, the cleaner the squeegee water yeah just like uh, yeah i think that'd be takes, really takes funny. the takes the hoe the the hose and like wraps it around someone's neck and is like choking them out and stuff yeah 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 they wrap them around like the uh the terminal and then they're just like hitting them as they're they're tied up by the the, the gas hose oh very very funny um you could like <laughs> shove a bunch of air fresheners in somebody's mouth <laughs> you, could, so... they, you could dunk their head in the toilet in the in like the gas station toilet oh that's so yeah. ridiculous huge i love it huge 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 potential love it uh let us know audience uh where would you want to have like a crazy match take place like a weird location like a i don't know like a skate park or uh, or, or like a trampoline, like one of the, like, you know, those trampoline, like sport places where like you got trampoline basketball and like, you, that would be a crazy match to have. Um, yeah. Let us know where you would want to put a crazy, uh, I guess you could say cinematic or gimmick match. Um, now for your recommendation of the week, it's my week. Yeah. And the match that I'm recommending, uh, we're right in the middle of WrestleMania season. So why not recommend one of the all-time best WrestleMania matches ever? Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock at WrestleMania 19. Hell yeah. 20 Hell minutes of yeah. 20 minutes of gold. I don't remember. I, I could look it up right now, but I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember if this is the last time that they fought. I'm pretty sure it is. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure this was the last match that they had together. Um, but it's, uh, WWE have been uploading all of like classic WrestleMania matches onto their, uh, 
YouTube channel right now. So, and they upload that one. So go and watch it. It's right there. Free to watch. Enjoy. Classic. Hell, yeah. Two amazing Titans of the industry. Perfect match. Woo. Titans of industry. Yeah, what a term. <laughs> Titans of industry. <laughs> but there we go. That will, that will call it there for the episode. It was a good one. Mm-hmm. It was weird. Love these weird ones. Yes. That you, that you always bring to the table, Anthony. Because, like, we can do serious matches and serious bookings, but we have so much more fun when we do uh, ones that are completely out of this world. Exactly. And that's what wrestling is, is you got to have mm-hmm. the serious with the weird and wacky. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to keep up to date with everything that we're doing here at Unknown Era, you can follow us online at UE underscore films. Go and subscribe to our mailing list at our shop so you can get notified when this shirt and others go live. UnknownEraShop.com You can follow us personally online. You can follow me on on Twitter and Instagram at Barton underscore Minute. You can follow Mr. Anthony Hall. At Hall and Jokes on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, you can follow the podcast uh, on Twitter at Book It Vince Pod. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for hanging out with us today, listening or watching. Stay safe out there. Go watch some wrestling, and we'll catch you next time. Do the finger thing. Yeah, too sweet. Too, too sweet. <laughs> <laughs>